What's up everybody, Frank Valkyria, welcome to my channel. Today we're doing another video on Brazilian CDs. Yesterday you were complaining that Sao Paulo wasn't in the video. This is not Sao Paulo. I hope this video goes from here to Sao Paulo. Otherwise, what's the purpose of this video in the first place? Eh? I'm moody. We're going to travel, so let's go. I'm a little bit if you see me like this. I haven't slept much. I could be like a villain in a new Star Wars movie. Huh? Something like. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no Star Wars movie. They should make another one. I want to be the villain in it. Let's go with the hat. And also, whoever this, this gentleman video, go subscribe to the TDC. Thank you so much. Let's like it because thanks. And Aberdeen and endless Aberdeen beaches Aberdeen. of Rio de Janeiro makes it the city that probably first comes to mind when you think of Brazil. It's true, we always think of Rio de Janeiro, that's nothing wrong with it. But Sao Paulo, the largest metropolis in the southern hemisphere, is the true economic engine of the world's sixth most populous country. In 1554, Catholic missionaries, with the help of indigenous workers, built a Catholic missionaries. Why didn't you just stay home? Eh? Mind your own business, trying to convert people that they were doing totally fine with their forest, with their food, with their land in the first place. God damn it, Christian missionary. A small village perched 750 meters above sea level and 70 kilometers from the Atlantic coast. It was the only inland settlement in the country a jumping off point for expeditions of conquerors, slave traders, and gold hunters. In the 1800s, Brazil became the world's leading coffee producer, but the farmers in Rio overcultivated their soil, giving Sao Paulo an opening to become the country's agricultural hub. As one of the few inland towns, it was closer than Rio to the plantations spread throughout the interior, mm -hmm. and it was directly linked by rail to the port of Santos, making it the ideal junction for shipments of goods on their way to the coast for export. In 1888, Brazil's businesses adapted to another... Man, this looks beautiful. You see the old times with the older architecture, and the, which was still not uh, overtaking, you know, the natural landscape. Look how beautiful this looks. Looks like it could be like a, a seed in Europe as well. Beautiful. But still... Freaking missionaries. Significant change when Emperor Dom Pedro II, regarded by many as the greatest Brazilian to ever live, can... Emperor? Emperor Dom Pedro? What? Brazil, you had an emperor, this dude? Huh? Like, nice beard, I have to say. Convinced his people to abolish slavery. Very good. With their captive labor force suddenly free, farmers and industrialists turned to immigrants from abroad. Today, as a result, Sao Paulo has the largest population of Italian descendants of any city on the planet, oh, including wow. Rome, the largest Japanese community outside of Japan. Wow, that's awesome. That's, um, that's, um, that's an interesting news. I thought also, um, well, probably also Buenos Aires has a ton of Italians there, but of course, makes sense. I remember in the early uh, in the beginning of the century i remember i wasn't there okay even though they called me islander but uh, that means nothing i wasn't there i'm joking but i remember that at the uh, beginning of the century there were so many steam ships leaving even from the port of naples even from the port of sorrento where i come from leaving for the americas and also south americas of course uh, i have some ancestors that moved both in uh, South America and um, and in, uh, in the U.S. I have a direct connection with my from my father's side uh, that his ancestor actually worked in the U.S. for many many years. And when I think about it, actually, because he went back and forth, uh, and he managed, you know, of course, to maintain his family and to get married and to produce kids. 
and every time i think about it i have to think like that if it wasn't because he probably immigrated you know and he made enough money that he could buy the land back in italy where he lived and, and you know made his family prosper and his daughter and then got married and then produced uh, my grandmother you know from my father's side and then produced my dad then i think like if the guy probably m maybe you know my father would have never been born you know so in that way it's a strange thing this thought uh it was back and forth for so long that at a certain point they thought uh he died because they couldn't reach him anymore you know they didn't know what was happening but in fact he was just working well no internet at the time and of course significant numbers of portuguese and spanish yeah, of course. many of these newcomers were skilled brazil huh why you picked portuguese and non-italian would have been so nice at least if i moved there i didn't have to learn another language god damn it brazil change it into italian right now factory workers i'm kidding i'm kidding helped sao paulo emerge as a manufacturing capital during the industrial revolution and world war ii over a period of less than 30 years the city's population exploded from 250,000 to 1 million steady growth continued through the century passing rio in 1960 today the population of the megalopolis known as sampa is over 20 million jesus christ man wow you're fucking kidding me like already in 74 9 million and a half people wow that's crazy man like that's scary city that, that's that's basically like like mexico city or even like tokyo i mean tokyo probably is even bigger wow man that's nuts 23 million people that's a country i mean in the netherlands there are roughly like 70 million people you know the whole freaking country of course it's a small country but still it's like the size of sicily more or less so in many that's... ways it is a thriving global city with the largest stock exchange in latin america a vibrant culture with over 100 museums and dynamic performing arts spaces and beautiful parks as part of football crazed brazil it proudly hosted matches during the 2014 world cup and is making significant investments in the next generation with oh. 850,000 students enrolled in higher education courses Unfortunately, though, Sao Paulo's rapid development has also taken a heavy toll, with four core problems rising above the rest. The city's only major bodies of water are the Chete and Pinheiros rivers. As the population grew, the government, plagued by inefficiency and... Chete Pinheiro, I like it, Chete. I like the name. Chete. The river Chete. Corruption. Even though to me sounds like Tiete. Tiete, because we pronounce it. I don't know how you pronounce that, huh? I'm offended. You you picked Portuguese over Italian. To I'm for basic infrastructure. Without enough wastewater treatment plants, sewage from millions of people flowed directly into the rivers. Toxic waste from industrial facilities was dumped without limit. When new highways were built, the city wow. laid them on the only continuous stretches of land left. This looks like an American highway like this. That's nuts. Look at this. So they built the, basically the highway around the river that is polluted. It's not a good place, man. Wow. This is the problem, of course. It's a good, it's a nice video that shows both sides of, you know, you know the coin. Uh, unfortunately, this is always the downside to development. Politicians and, uh, yeah people in power usually they uh they don't care so much about they, they they live too much in the sort of short term it's like okay we gotta do this we have to produce the economy has to be running but then they don't see in the long term effect that you know how do you uh dismantle manage the waste that industrialized production creates and this is the problem of course everywhere and uh yeah, we should be able to first know how to manage those other, you know, th the outcome of um, of industrialization in order to continue and produce more. Otherwise, you're just taking resources away and you're basically messing up everything else. The riverbanks and then hid stretches of them behind walls. But even if you can't always see the rivers, their stench doesn't go away. 
dude that's a lame wall that's a, the lamest wall ever i can see the thing from here of course i have a bird eye view but still this wall it's like a foot lame wall huh make a bigger wall and the chat is that it's most called trump he's out of a job maybe he wants to go come over build walls there this is his passion choked it is a biological dead zone as far away as bara bonita he's unemployed 60 kilometers downstream it wasn't always this way the rivers used to be gathering points for recreation. Ah, look at this. Distant memories that are motivating current rehabilitation efforts, which include projects to treat 100% of all wastewater. Ah, such a pity, man. This is the thing that really is the most pitiful. The fact that you also take away the, the space for people to enjoy. I mean, this river once was clean so that people could have enjoyed the banks. You know what I mean? This is really like, and all how fucking ugly this is, like... I hate those uh, suburb areas of high rises and modern, uh, uh, but everywhere, not only here, I, I hate it everywhere. When they just destroy the, the landscape, look how nice those banks are, you know, like if they're bona fide, like they're, they're cleaned, it's an area that people can use to enjoy, have a picnic. And of course, probably you cannot even get close there because you just get a disease or something from the pollution before it enters the Chete, putting an end to all illegal uh, dumping and teaching people how to care for their rivers and streams. Very good. The second major challenge is that 10% of Palistanos live in high density makeshift neighborhoods called favelas. While the buildings are typically low quality, most favelas are vibrant working class communities. Some settlements, however- Jesus Christ, 10%, 10%. 10% of 20 plus million. Wow, that's a CD on itself. It's like 2 million plus people. Jesus. Are little more than squatter shacks. You know, I have to say like, th this part, these raw houses, they already look like made better with some sense, you know, than this. This looks like just makeshift ready to collapse, goddammit. It also looks older probably. Uh, Wow, such a pity, man. Like, it really feels like this is like literally they made the foundation, but it looks much better. I mean, there is not the stuck and the covering, but at least actually when I look at this, it reminds me a little bit of my paintings. Uh, I always paint those stuff, actually. I don't know if I ever showed you. I like to make paintings like this. Wait, let me see if I can show you one painting. Uh, let's see painting like this my older painting I don't know if you can see it uh, my older paintings that's oil on acrylic like something like that you know I love that very nice so anyway here I am let's continue nice houses Ax without access to electricity, sewage, and running water. Wow. To give these people a better place to live while improving the overall quality of housing throughout Sampa, the city has spent billions of dollars on a variety of programs. Jesus Christ, look at this, how big is this area? My God. Wow, is it all this area all the way around here? Wow, that's insane, man. One experiment allows low-income residents to purchase new government-built apartments for affordable monthly payments of less than $100. It's a win-win. Ownership helps people become more financially stable while incentivizing them to maintain these spaces. This was my dream. I think it's almost as wonderful as having a new baby. It's all I expected it to be. It's not furnished yet the way I want it, but I dearly love this apartment. The downside is that the government has been building many of these projects far from the city center. Lorene has a two-hour commute to work, and there are no local parks for her son to safely play with his friends. Lack of access to services plagues all of Sao Paulo because of how it developed. The best jobs are where the transportation network is concentrated, in the city center. And since that's also the most expensive place to live, Lower income people are pushed farther and farther out and have to spend more money, energy, and time. Yep. 
dude further out th this is like in another country if that's correct like the legenda there for the distance god damn it that what how far is that and also this lake here looks awesome man look at all those beautiful lakes so fractals and you know actually looks very nice i wonder where that is yeah it's really of course like the development pushed people out because it's this is already uh, kind of a normal thing almost everywhere like you go in london is the same thing it's stupid how expensive it is for people to live uh i mean i pay <sighs> i live in the netherlands i live outside the city and i pay like 1600 euro a month of rent actually more so just uh, it's in some countries it's like a salary of a person you know like to pay them much rent around the municipal government understands it must improve this situation and has unveiled an ambitious new master plan to better integrate lower income areas with parks transportation hubs and jobs like much of the world brazil has a growing gap between its wealthiest citizens and everyone else the top one percent of sao paulo city residents owns 45 percent of the property the master plan addresses this by mandating that private property owners who underutilize valuable city space need to either meet scheduled deadlines for putting that space to better use or pay a progressively costly urban property tax the plan has been praised internationally but the real challenge will be overcoming the powers that be to make sure it is carried out this brings us to sao paulo's third major problem city-wide traffic jams that steal tens of millions of productive minutes every day. In the last decade, the population increased 11%, but the number of cars grew 113%, 10 times as fast. Congestion is so bad that wealthy Palestinos are flocking to the air, and the city now has the world's largest helicopter fleet. The yeah, this is something that actually I've known already for a long time. I think if already, this is already a known fact for quite uh, maybe already a couple of decades. I remember a long time ago see a documentary of that the traffic in Sao Paulo is so bad that a lot of uh, you know officials, uh, business people, people in general they uh, they take like air taxi, like jets, uh, like helicopter to move uh, from building to building for business appointment and so on and so forth. Um, some some of you says like said like uh, uh, told me in the comment section uh, that because I like New York probably I would love to live in Sao Paulo. Um, I don't know. So far to me this looks like too big of a city. You know what I mean? New York is a big city, but it feels somehow at least Manhattan feels like uh, much more cozy than this. This 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 feels like overwhelming. This feels like a gigantic place. Uh, ability of the wealthy and powerful to avoid their city's problems by literally flying over them has contributed to a sense of complacency among the leaders of Brazilian society. Like many other nations, it is now reckoning with the damage caused by politicians who put personal greed over the best interests. Oh, we're going to get some people mad here. I don't know none of those people. I only know Lula was the president in the past, right? He also got incarcerated, incarcerated and are released because uh, apparently uh, it, w it wasn't found guilty whatever that happened sorry that I didn't follow but some of you mentioned this and pointed it out that because when it came out people were happy but I really don't know enough I really don't know enough and I also don't want to get into those uh, you know political thing of the people an example of this is a shiny new high-speed rail line connecting Sao Paulo and Rio that the federal government promised to build oh wow actually like because i'm freaking dumb and i didn't know it's actually interesting to see the visual of how far actually uh it of is the people an example of this is a shiny new high-speed rail line connecting sao pa and how far would that be so you go here to rio de janeiro okay so the cities the cities are fairly close what is it like two three hundred kilometers or more well Honestly, if I see this, I have the sense it might be like five, 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 six hundred kilometers or something. Paulo and Rio that the federal government promised to build in its winning bids for both the 2014 World Cup and 2016 Olympics. 
But two years after the flame left Rio, the rail project hasn't even broken ground. Of course, of course, politicians, eh? They always oversell and they, ne they always underdeliver. Always. Palestinos are fed up. Hundreds of thousands protested to demand solutions to the mobility crisis, forcing local officials to listen to people and integrate their best ideas into the master plan. Like, dude, I was expecting like a little like more uh, touristic documentary on this freaking Sao Paulo city. It's kind of making me depressed. All those issues. God damn it. How best to expand the number of roads and metro lines, increase express bus routes, build networks of dedicated bike lanes, and concentrate housing near public transport hubs to maximize... That's nice. That's basically what they do here in terms of also bike lanes. There is literally bike lanes everywhere because it's the preferred method of transportation. Also due to the fact that it's flat, so it's easier to get around. But uh, living in a city where the public transport and the trams and the buses work so incredibly efficiently uh, uh, compared to other places, it's so great. It really makes it like I live like five kilometers from the center, but uh, either with the bike or I take the metro or the tram is so easy. It feels so easy to rely on those things that I don't feel that far from the center at all. So in, in that way, uh, it's, it's really great. And when a city develops in that direction, it makes it so livable, you know? As employment opportunities. Sao Paulo's most distressing challenge reached a critical point four years ago, when the region suffered the worst drought in its recorded history, wow. as just half the rain fell from the previous driest year. Without water to wash dishes, high-end restaurants served guests on plastic plates, Jesus and cafes Christ. couldn't brew coffee. As panic set in, fighting erupted in the hardest hit neighborhoods, and emergency water delivery trucks were robbed. As the city's main reservoir dropped below 5%, less than three weeks supply, the military feared the water control center could be overtaken by an angry mob. One service engineer remembered those terrifying days. We knew that when people don't have water, they go crazy. We imagined what they would be like here with 21 million people. Jesus, man, without water, heat, and 21 million people. I mean, I'm surprised that we didn't get, like, a, a World War Z happening, you know? We didn't get, like, a zombie apocalypse there. In the end, a storm arrived just in time to avoid catastrophe. Very good. Since then, other sources throughout the region have been tapped to give Sao Paulo a bit more supply when the next apocalyptic drought arrives. But some experts are warning that even more extreme dry spells loom on the horizon. The vast South American jungle has traditionally served as a biotic pump, circulating water down from the tropics through rivers in the sky that converge over southeastern Brazil, delivering reliable... Of course, if you cut the fucking forest, and this is, you know, this type of climate influence that it has uh, decreases, you're gonna have less water flowing down into the rivers and on the coast affecting the climate and affecting the water reservoir and it's always down to us being fucking dumb or rains year in and year out but decades of logging and agriculture <laughs> have gutted hundreds of millions of acres of dense mature trees and every second another two acres disappear with why am i not surprised less plants and soil catching and absorbing rainfall there is less moisture evaporating as clouds into the airstream and ultimately less rain falling on Sao Paulo. The lifeblood of this megalopolis has been the three or four convergence rainfalls that have arrived like clockwork every year to fill the region's reservoirs. But as the frequency of these events becomes less reliable, so do the future prospects of the entire city. The remarkable fact is that 20% of the world's water is stored in Brazil but the vast majority of it falls far to the north. With its rivers currently too polluted to drink from and development continuing to spread inland, there are limited options for- Wow, oh, man, this makes me so angry, man. Makes me so angry because, you know, a region that is so pivotal, so important, you know, the Amazon forest, uh, it, it's just uh, an incredible thing, uh, nature-wise, you know, and, uh, 
I imagine the landscape hundred years ago of this place and the uh, and the surrounding and the and the wealth that gives, you know, throughout the region and also for the entire fucking planet, to see that people misuse that and uh, basically are the cause of drought or you know sometimes the weather changes but obviously this has an effect it's been known you destroy the the the, the vegetation and uh, you know it doesn't retain the the moist the heat that just evaporates and that's it so it dis disrupts the cycle of weather uh, or micro weather in the area so again i was hoping to see like wow it, this is also nice i mean it gives like a, a more in-depth look at also the issues of a place but then i'm also not surprised peop places which they over you know overgrow uh, we can do a uh, watch a documentary videos even on mexico city or on tokyo maybe the difference is that tokyo probably being very advanced technologically already for a long time probably they find ways to dispose of pollution or anything but still um I have, I have no illusion that it's perfect so if we look at the video there as well we will find ton of problems because there is no other way where where a city becomes this huge it's a city that it's a country 20 million people how can you not have issues with resources it is bolstering it's, it's actually a miracle that they still manage really so that means that they're doing something right as well Otherwise, it would just been already like, you know, catastrophic by by building costly dams or acquiring new sources. Oh, that was an impressive dam. I have to say, look how beautiful this look at this forest, lush green. Look at how amazing it looks this is through long canals. In the end, the people of Sao Paulo, just like the rest of us, are learning the fundamental lesson of the 21st century to survive and thrive our cities must embrace the most sustainable methods of development. The good news is that, with a clever master plan and citizens dedicated to taking action, Sao Paulo is hard at work on the long-term solutions yeah. to deliver a better life for millions of people. For All TVC, right. I'm Bryce Plank. Oh, you see, there is Tokyo. Actually, we should see Tokyo. Let, let me know, guys, if you want to see. This gentleman did a nice documentary with the voice over describing the issue tdc go check him out uh, i'm gonna subscribe just because good man good man good documentary interesting infos i was wearing my hat eh? i was wearing my hat to go in holiday holiday it was not really entertaining it was entertaining but not the entertainment i was thinking of but anyway guys if you want to see more of this type of videos let me know we did a little bit of commentary let me know if you agree with some of the stuff if something was missing from the narration here in the story if something was uh, overblown you know what i mean like like anything else documentaries can take a, a stance and have a bias so um it's always good to discuss and have an open discussion about things without being uh, uh, in denial of real issues and problems so it was interesting to learn it was really interesting to know those facts that i did not know about the size and the population and the issues of the water and the draft and what can be done hopefully that would be also a nice counter instead of just focusing too much on, on economy you know short-sighted um, creating advantages for big corporation or whatever which in the immediate time seems like the best thing to do because you keep the economy running and people making money and spending but then in the long run long run the effect will be catastrophic so the sooner people get to work to find solutions through science the better future a better future we're gonna have or the generations after us they're gonna have otherwise cuckoo cuckoo Cucuru cucuru paloma, eh? Without the paloma, cucuru cucu, cucu. That's how we say in Napolitan. Niente. See you guys later. Ciao.